Hey guys, what's up? It's Ali Straza. This video is sponsored by King, and we're going to be playing their brand new game, Legend of Soulguard. I'm going to give you guys an introduction to the game, show you the basics, and give you some tips and tricks on how to play the game well. So let's get started, and I hope you enjoy. So Legend of Soulguard is a strategy game, and it's also an RPG. You're collecting creatures, you're leveling up abilities, and you're using them in strategic ways to defeat powerful enemies and other players in-game. And the way that you play is by arranging those creatures in columns and rows. So let's give you an introduction on some of the creature combinations. So in order to attack in Legend of Soulguard, you need to align your creatures of the same color in a single column of three or more. So in addition to attacking, you can also create barriers. And you create barriers to protect yourself or your creatures from enemy attacks. And you achieve this by aligning your creatures of three or more horizontally. So you can have different sizes of creatures on the board. In order to create a bigger, more powerful creature, you need to align four of your creatures in a square pattern. You can also reinforce your minions, and you do this by lining up two of the smaller minions behind the already combined one to give them two extra stats for attack. And you can also do this for bigger combinations like this. Alright guys, moving on to some basic combat. Uh, creature attacking. You get three moves per turn, and at the end of each turn, your creatures will destroy anything in their path until they run out of power. There is also creature holding, meaning that certain creatures cannot attack for a turn or more, depending on the little hourglass that is next to the creature. You'll see it count down, and also creatures get more powerful for every turn that they're held. So more on the subject of minions that are in a hold state. They can actually act as a barrier to your hero uh, while they're holding, because little creatures that are on the board that haven't been combined can only block uh, one health of damage, and holding creatures can actually block their combined strength worth of damage. And you can sometimes get lucky and they can actually fend off more damage than their combined strength. So what I think makes this game really fun is all the little abilities that you can do with your creatures in order to try and take down the enemy. And in general, there are about like three different creature abilities that you really see. So let's go over them. So number one is combination triggered abilities. And so some creatures get a new ability once they're combined. So take the elfling for example. When the elfling is combined, he throws a little like button or something and stuns the enemy creature, stopping them from attacking for a turn and also dealing its damage to them. Also for combination triggered abilities, uh, we talked about reinforcement a little bit earlier. So if a creature that has a combination triggered ability is reinforced, it will actually trigger its ability again by the reinforcement. So for example, a uh, little elfling will trigger another stun if he is reinforced. There's also end of turn triggered abilities, which is pretty self-explanatory. The ability triggers at the end of turn. So for example, the Rock Gronk has a Boulder Hurl ability where he chucks a rock at the strongest enemy minion. Bam, got him. Lastly, we have attack triggered abilities, abilities that are triggered when the creature attacks. So for example, we have the Rough Paw that has the ability called the Bear Hug, which gives the creatures next to him 100% uh, block chance against one enemy strike. All right guys, so let's move on to the game modes. And this is really my favorite thing about Legend of Soulguard is the fact that there's lots of different ways to play the game. You can play against other players, you can do different campaigns, and so it's not just like one linear leveling up system. There's lots of different ways to play it. So I'll go over the game modes here now. Okay, so the first is the campaign portal levels. Uh, most levels in the campaign will require you to break down the enemy's portal, and you do this by having your creatures attack till the enemy's health is zero. So next we have the campaign boss levels. So as you go throughout the campaign, you will encounter bosses. And this differs than the portals because you have to defeat the boss instead. And these can actually be more challenging because the boss moves throughout the field, meaning that your uh, attacks can actually miss as he moves, and he also casts strong attacks as well. 
There are also other modes that have a different objective than just defeating the enemy, like the treasure caves. Uh, in the treasure caves, your goal is to do as much damage as possible in a given number of turns. And the more damage that you do, uh, the more treasure you get. There are a lot of game modes in Legend of Soul Guard, so I won't go over all of them in this video because it needs to be in good time, but I do want to mention the guild dungeons. So you can join a guild and take down uh, bosses slowly over multiple rounds, and you will be defeated uh, each time up until the final round, but the goal is to get in as much damage as possible. A pro tip real quick is to make sure that you break all of the armor that he has first. So now that you guys know some of the basics of the game, uh, let's jump into a battle so you can actually see the game in action. Okay guys, so this is the lineup that I'm going to use for the battle. Uh, the first is the Rough Paw, and he will provide support for my group and also boost any nearby creatures surrounding him. The Crackle Hoof will strike enemies with lightning when combined. And also we've got the Grim Chop, so he's a defender that can actually use his shield to strike enemies when combined. And finally, my knight cast is my attacker, who has a powerful combination ability that actually sets the ground on fire. Alright guys, so that's my lineup. I'm gonna end this video by showing you guys a full game so you can like really see how the game really plays out. So I hope you enjoyed it so far and look for more videos about Legend of Soul Guard to come. Thanks guys! Alright guys, so I showed you my lineup, let's just jump right into a game. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm seeing that we've got a green Grim Chop on the right who's looking very lonely, so let's move him over with his buddies on the left. And we can see the purple Nightcast over here on the right. Looks like he can be combined with his friends in the middle. And I kind of want to move this yellow guy here in the middle over to the right to kind of set up for next turn and make way for a big uh, rough paw. So let's grab the yellow on the left here, get those guys combined, and then we can take a pink and make a big rough paw in the center, which I like to prioritize because he boosts all of the guys around us. Right now seems like a good turn to recall, so let's push the uh, resummon button. And we got really lucky there, sweet. I don't know if you noticed, but we got two extra dudes just because they resummoned in a fortunate way. So we can make a purple knight cast on the right if we double tap to get rid of the yellow on the right. Double tap gets rid of a creature. We can grab our knight cast over to the right. Let's set up our yellow uh, for next turn by putting them over here. Attack my minions, onward. Okay. <laughs> um, we can move our grim chop and kind of set up and let's just recall here. Looks like the yellow's in the way. Let's double tap him, get rid of him. And now we attack, our three turns is up. And sweet, we made a barrier, that worked out nicely. Let's grab the knight cast over here on the left, combine him with his buddies. Seems good. And let's reinforce our knight cast on the left here by dragging two of the guys behind the existing knight cast. So let's attack here, seems good. Uh, let's use our ability in the bottom left hand corner, but I'll go over this in a later video. Uh, and let's just recall. Let's move our Grim Chop, kind of combine him. <sighs> I kind of want a pink. So let's move the green Grim Chop and kind of set up for a reinforce potentially, and also make way so we can get the uh, Rough Paw combined for next turn or for now. So let's do that. Boost the creatures around us. Feels amazing, man. And we'll take a Grim Chop on the left here, reinforce our existing green Grim Chop. And that makes way to take the yellow and set up for a big Crackle Hoof. And that should definitely be enough damage. Went through that really quickly. I hope you guys followed. And there you have it. There was, there was a quick game. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you'd like to see more content from me, you can check out some of my stream highlights from Twitch over here. And if you'd like to get to know me a little bit more, maybe outside of gaming, you can check out my vlogs over here. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and thank you again for watching this video. Bye guys.